Hello everyone, how are you? And welcome to the Dance Theater of Harlem online, online, live masterclass with Karen Brown. I am so happy to be here with you guys. I am in um, North Augusta, South Carolina, in the home that I grew up in. I have some local dancers here who are going to help me with the point class. And I'm so, so proud to have this class be the first class in this brand new studio. So the very first thing that we're going to start out with tips and advice on going on point. And so I'm going to be showing exercises for all different um, levels and for ways for parents and children, students who are eager to go on point, who doesn't want to go on point once you've been studying ballet, to figure out when is the right time, right? You want to be strong enough, you want your ankles and feet to be strong enough to support your body. And so we'll be talking about those kinds of um, ideas about how you really know uh, whether you're strong enough to go on point. And I'll be sharing tips with you on how to strengthen your ankles and feet, toes, and working on your toes being and having as much dexterity as your hands. And so uh, without further ado, I would like to invite the two dancers we are going to be practicing social distancing. We have marked off the floor six feet apart. We're going to come in from different entrances and different exits. And so here we go. I would like to bring on Amory and Karina. Yay! And here are your seats. Oh, man, I need my towels. Uh-huh. And let's sit down. I need their pencils. Thank you. So if you will go there, one of the first things that we want to do um, is make sure that our hand, that we are strong enough to go on point. And one of the things that one of the ways that um, I usually do when I send to my um, students that I teach is I say go to the Gaynor Minden page and look to see what does it say about knowing when you're strong enough to go on point. So one of the exercises there is, can you stand on releve, um, which is going up on demi points, up on the very tips of your toes, right, without point shoes on, with your eyes closed, and balance for eight counts. So ladies, can you please stand up, face the wall. Carmina, why don't you go on that wall, and, and we have you face that way, and you're going to hold on to the wall first. So what I'm going to ask them to do is to come take one foot, you're in parallel, Bring it up to the side of your ankle, I mean, to the side of your knee, like if you were in passe, and rise up on demi points. And close your eyes and see if you can stay there for, let me get covering it under from the camera. Stay there for eight counts, and I'll make them quick. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, eyes closed. Four, take the bar if you can. Six, seven, eight. Come to demi points on parallel and lower yourselves down. Yes, great, thank you. So we can see that these ladies right now, I'm calling her Karina a lady, she's a little girl, she's just turned 12, are not, not strong enough at this point, although Anne Marie has been on point, to go on point. So we're now gonna, if you could put your, take your seats and we'll do some exercises where they will um, work on their, strengthening their feet. So we're going to start out, one of the first things for this dexterity, and I actually learned this exercise from Kathy Grant, and I'm going to need a pen, another pen, please. You're going to, the idea is, look at my hands, you're going to lift one toe up at a time and place it down. Now, before COVID-19, I would hold one, hold all the other toes down and let the dancer lift their toes up. But they're actually going to do this by themselves, and I'm going to take the camera and zoom in as they attempt this. So they're going to get their feet. Sit at the edge of your seat. You're going to be sitting up nice and straight and tall, 90 degrees and parallel. You can also do this with a tennis ball between your knees just to keep your alignment. And we'll lift. Uh, let's take one foot at a time. We'll take our right big toe and lift it up and place it down. But only the big toe. We're lifting one toe at a time. Let's take our second toe on the right foot. Lift it up. Make sure we're sitting up nice and straight and tall, navel to our spine, and place it down. 
And let's go to the third toe. This is not an easy exercise, but it does help with dexterity. Lift your third toe up and place it down. And the fourth toe, it gets even more difficult. Lift it up and place it down. And the fifth toe, your little baby pinky toe, lift it up and place it down. You can use your other toes that aren't moving to press them into the floor as you lift the last toe. Let's go to, I'm sorry that I moved off their feet. Let's go to the other foot. Um, we'll take our left foot and remember to sit up nice and straight and tall. We lift our right foot, um, the big toe up and place it down. And place it down and then let's lift our second toe up and place it down and it's not so much about how high it's just about getting in touch with those muscles in your toes lift your third toe up good job i see it moving a little bit and place it down and the fourth toe let's lift it up and place it down and the last pinky toe lift it up and place it down all right, very good. So that's one exercise that we can do. The next one that we can do, we're gonna take pencils, and I've been very kind of giving them nice fat pencils to put one between your toes. So we're gonna put the pencil in the crevice between where the toes join the base of the foot and grip the pencil, all right? So and what you can do, if you're not able to um, do that and you want to have some sort of that you can do it under three finger three toes sorry and have your big toe and your little toe free until you develop your strength all right and now we're going to extend sorry extend your leg that has a pencil you can even hold your leg up at a 90 degree angle and we're going to just flex and point and flex here we go Hold on, Karina's getting her in there. <laughs> I can't, I'm sorry, I can't come over there and help you. Yep. And flex, hold your foot up in there. And point, and flex, good Emory, and point, and flex, and point, and flex, and point, and relax. All right, let's put that, let's try the other foot. We want to be evenly balanced on both feet. Remember, the, we're putting the pencil inside the crevice, curling our toes around and holding as we flex and point. Here we go on the other side. Five, oops, sorry. Please, um, and I didn't say that these exercises were gonna be easy. All right, here we go, stretch out, and you can hold your leg up at a 90 degree angle, that's what helps me. And flex, uh-oh, uh-oh. Maybe I think maybe I should have gotten them smaller pencils. I'm not sure. A number two pencil. A new number two. Okay, so we're suggesting that we do this with a number two pencil. <laughs> and flex and point. Can you feel that, ladies? And if, if you hold your leg up at 90 degree angle, it helps. Yeah. All right. So now that's number two. We're going to the third exercise. I'm giving each lady a towel. Get that, please, and this one. You're gonna take your towel, the thicker the better. If you wanna have more dexterity, you'll take a um, thinner towel, fold it in half, and you're gonna lay it down on the floor. You're sitting up um, on your towel, I mean on your chair, and your heel is down at the end edge of the towel, at this edge, and we're gonna scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch with our toes and pull the towel in. Ready? So I'm going to come a little bit closer with the camera and let's do one foot at a time and go scrunch and 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 scrunch scrunch keep going all the way and pull it all the way in Karina put your heel on the edge of the towel yep you started so far back and once you get it all the way in go 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 and maybe for you, you could have done a thinner towel. No laughing. <laughs> we have people. And now we're going to take our toes and push it out. Push it out. Push it out. Push it out. So we're curling our toes and pushing it out with the tops of our tops of our toes to push it out. Yeah. Karina, take try your towel. Single layer. So Karina's on the right. You're right. Oh, I can't even tell. Karina's over there, the little girl. In the, so when you 
once you get your towel in, your, these are your toes, scrunching and pushing it out. After you pull it in, 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 you push it out, out, out with your toes. Yeah. And then the last thing that we have. Do it on the other side oh, uh, yeah, are you doing on the other side? Perfect for old toe training. Oh, <laughs> uh, Anne Marie says it's perfect for old toe training. Go, pull in, pull in, pull in. One, ba 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 ba. Yep, all the way in. And then just push it out, out, out. Good, excellent, much better until it's not underneath. And the last thing that I want you to do, ladies, can you sit down on the floor? Now I'll call you dancers. Sit on the floor, like just move your chair. Yep. And you're going to um, flex your feet. Both legs just extend it out in parallel. Nice. Yeah, just hold that away. We're going to go ball, point, ball, flex. Ball, point, ball, flex. So our three quarter, point, three quarter, flex. Three quarter, point. Three quarter flex. Now, what I want um, you to do and be really mindful of, dancers, is that when your knees are straight and you're sitting on the floor, that the backs of the knees are so straight that your heels come up off the floor. So, Anne Marie, could you just show that for me? See how her heel, flex your feet, please. See how her heels are up off the floor? Do three quarter and point. And now um, the idea, hold on, hold, 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 and full point, full point, is that their heels are still off the floor. In full point. Yep. And now Karina, go three quarter from there. There you go. And and full point. Beautiful. Both ladies. Now we do this. Three quarter point, three quarter flex. Three quarter point, three quarter. As fast as you can. Ready? Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Three quarter and point. Three quarter and flex. 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 Three quarter and point. Three quarter. Yes. And rest. Woo wee! So as fast as you can go, right? With with the dexterity, still reaching your maximum point and your maximum flex. All right. So the next exercise that I'd like to do is to go to let's um the one that goes like a like a cobra, right? So and I for me I like to do this exercise where I'm holding one knee up like flat on the floor. You're sitting, yeah. Just and it could be on the floor. So it can be, you can be like this, just holding your holding your stomach and your spine straight up for this exercise. You go, pop, pop, pop. And what's happening is you curl your toes like this, and your foot is flexing, you go pop, 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 like that. I call it the cobra, right? That's really so maybe turn sideways, you guys, facing each other, staying on your little dots and face each other, and flex your feet and curl your toes and go one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last time, three, four, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Point the blood leg spin. Stretch out the parallel. Point, point both legs and switch to the other side, please. <sighs> Sit up nice and chain tall. Here we go. Curl your toes. Flex your feet. Flex and here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, two, three, four. Sit up straight. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. All right, lovely. Thank you very much. Stand up, please. We're gonna say goodbye to Anne Marie. Lovely. Thank you very much. And we're gonna wait. And Karina, I'm gonna excuse you. Can you move your chairs? and your stools and everything off. I'm gonna talk with you for a minute. I'm gonna take your stool. And I'm gonna sit down for a minute and talk a little bit about point shoes. And ladies, you're gonna put on your point shoes now and put your socks over shoes. One second, I'll call you one as I talk about what's gonna happen. Then I'm going to have, um, Phoebe's gonna come and join me. She's gonna sit on, on that side of me. And um, while she puts on her shoes, and I'm gonna talk with you guys about the point shoes. So first of all, all, usually when I was dancing, those point shoes all came pink. And now I have my brand new gainer amendments, which are brown. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, um, buying your, so your point shoes. They're usually two or three sizes smaller than your street shoes. And um, the way that you, you know, you're going to have them professionally fit by a point shoe fitter is just the best way. Let me say this, you do not buy point shoes to grow into. 
You buy them for the size of your foot as your foot is that size. And then unfortunately, parents, when the foot grows, they need to get new shoes, not shoes that they can grow into because then they're too big. They need to fit securely so that they don't create uh, blisters or um, damage their, their bodies. When you get your shoes, the best one of the things that you want to do is fold the bottom down this way. It should come a little bit closer, right? There we go. And then you're going to sew your elastic here and here. And then the ribbons go a little bit in front of that. Phoebe, could you come on now, please? And come on this side with all of your paraphernalia. And let's talk about sewing points. So you generally you people put their shoes on when they're sitting on the floor. It's easy. I mean, you can put them on sitting down, but dancers are always on the floor, stretching and everything. So she's going to start with her shoes on the floor. So there's all kinds of protections that you can put inside your shoes. By the time I finish talking, I'll you be have your shoes on. You can put their way to prepare your feet. And um, there's there's a new product all out that Evie is using that kind of dries her her foot so that there's there's no um, her skin doesn't tear once she puts on puts on the shoes. They're made of satin and glue. And um, there's a drawstring around the side around the neck of the shoe. Sometimes in store-bought shoes, they're in the front, but you can now have them designed anywhere. They can be on the side or whatever, right? She's using a toe pad. Now, I've always had my toe pad inside, I mean, outside my um, tights, but Phoebe prepares to have hers inside her tights, and it's a little bit like a little um, hood that goes around her toes to protect them from um, getting bunions or scrapes, developing corns, and again, they fit snugly, right? There is also something called toe separators, right? Sometimes your toes are on top of one another. Now there's these all kinds of scientific scientific inventions around uh, point shoes. So there are toe separators. Um, and so Phoebe uses one of those. She also has an extremely well-defined uh, arch instep, right? And so she actually uses two elastic across her uh, insteps to support her foot, which is very, very flexible. And she's learning how to develop the strength to hold herself up on her point. Now, one of the ways that I like to tie my shoes from, you take your ribbon from the outside around and underneath one, right? And your ribbon will be here because you want to tuck your elastic or your ribbon inside very close to your ankle so that it doesn't come out and it's not obtrusive and it's not a big bump. So that little space is where you tuck your ribbons in. You want to make sure that your ribbons are um, secure and they don't come out. There are lots of different ways to do that. Some people use hairspray. You can put rosin inside there, which is rosin is like the bow, similar to the bow rosin that musicians use, but dancers use it to keep themselves from slipping and sliding on the floor. And then, the, of course, the safest way to do it is take two little whip stitches with a needle and thread that's in your dance bag to secure your ribbons so that they can't possibly come out um, during your variation or during your work on stage. All right, so thank you very much for that. And I need you to put your socks on over your shoes. So I showed you some brand new shoes and I think I wanted to show you while we're getting, uh, Karina is gonna come out and join us as well because we're going to do some exercises. Even though she's not on point yet, I'm going to show, demonstrate some non-weight-bearing exercises that I learned, I wish I had known when I was training, to be able to strengthen the ankles and feet um, before you go on point. So what I do to carry my shoes, I fold the back in, my brown elastics, my ribbons, fold one side in, fold the other side in, and then I wrap, um, wrap the end of my shoe like this. I don't have my... Um, Whatever I'm using to protect my feet is not inside the shoe. This way, and then I carry them where I put one inside the other very neatly and go carry them like this in my dance bag. Sometimes I will um, mark on the back of the shoe what ballet they're for, whether one is right or left, because they come neutral. They don't come with the right shoe and a left shoe like street shoes. They're just one shoe, and then your, your foot decides whether it's going to be the right shoe or the left. So ladies, would you come back on stage now, Karina, are you ready? Great, all right, so now they each have on point shoes, and we're going to show some of these accelerated learning techniques from, sorry, you guys, me and the camera. Hi, hi everybody. Um, 
these, some of these exercises from, from um, some work that I've been learning over the last three years called reinforced motor function for ballet application. And so um, the first exercise that I'm going to give them is they're going to be lying down on the floor. Remember, they have on point shoes, but they have socks on over their shoes just so their bed's more easy to glide. I'm going to step back in the corner, and um, Russell's going to make sure that I'm in the shot. But we've already marked off, and I know I'm six feet away if I get on my mark. Okay, so you guys are going to lie down with your butts on your, on your mark. <laughs> your mark just came up, but it was right. Yeah, that's right. Your bottom, now to do this exercise, your bottom is close to the wall, as close as you can get, right? And then your feet are going to be in parallel, and your arm position is in pirouette or preparation position. Now, in this exercise, the dancers are going to open their arms in second, two, three, four, and close them back. Yes? We're working on um, core strength. They're going to get some exercise, you know, work on their glutes. Their feet are what is going to actually propel them up into the air, and their core, their abs are going to propel them up into the air. So point your feet. Toes are pointed in parallel. And now you're going to lift up. Let's go all the way up and then open our arms and then close our arms and come down. Point, keep your toes pointed. I wish I could get over there and touch them, but I can't. So what I would do is I would use another one of the um, accelerated learning techniques that I'm using, which is um, CMA, Computerized Motion Analysis. And I would videotape this and then show them um, in this day of COVID-19. So let's do it one more time. Point your toes, strong, 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 straight knees, and rise up, two, three, four, open arms, and close them, come down. Good job. Hold your stomach, hold your stomach, lower yourself, down, hold, and breathe. Here we go. And up, two, point your toes, point your toes, and hold. All the way up, 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 up. Yes, thank you. Higher. Open the arms in second, and close them back in second, and come down. And if you need to move closer to the wall, please take it a little bit of an adjustment. Right. It's easier if you're just going straight up and down. Yes? Let's do this one more time. Point turn in. You're, you're parallel, totally parallel. Right. And so your toes are going to be pointing, and your heels in this position are helping you get up. As soon as you get up to the top, Karina, think about that three-quarter point, three-quarter flex, that point that you gave me where your heels were off the floor. I want to see that when you go all the way up to the top. Okay? Here we go. Five, six. Seven, eight, and go up. Two, three, four, and open arms. Six, seven, eight, close down. Close your arms. Two, three, four, lower down. Six, one more time with that timing. Up, two, three, four, open arms. Six, seven, eight, close your arms. Two, three, four, lower down. Six, seven, eight. Eight. Good job. Well, let's try this exercise turned out. Relax your arms, make your adjustment, make your bottom closer to the floor. There you go. All right, we do this turned out with pointed feet. And in this time when we go up, the idea is that your heels, you're going to be pushing your heel forward in the way that we wing an arabesque and that we developate due to a uh, uh, Double page devant or even second, but that heel is coming forward. It's the same heel that's forward in the sur le coup de pied. That is the heel that's coming up, and you're going to be pressing on your pinky toes, is where you're trying to go when you get up to the top of your, your rise or the hip rise, hip raise. Sorry. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Angle up, point your toes, point your toes, point your toes. Good. Hold, open the arms and close them and release down. Rest. Yes, try to try to gradually cut down. This is where are you feeling this girls? Calves. Calves. Core. <laughs> glutes. Excellent. All right. This is good. This is great. Let's go one more time. Five, six, seven, and, and feet down when you go up as high as you can. So you're almost doing a bridge on your shoulders, right? Don't stop here in this part of your back. Go all the way up. Five, six, seven, eight, and go up. That's it. All the way, all the way, all the way. Heels forward, little toes on the wall, and come down. Open your arms. Woo! You guys know this better than I do. Open the arms and close them, and come down. And one more time. Go adjust, adjust. If you need to. Yep. And fly up. Two, three, four. All the way up to the top. Beautiful, Karina. Arms open. Arms closed. 
and come down. Lovely. All right, last one. We didn't even practice this, so this is a new one. Plie with your knees in first position and your three-quarter point on the wall. So bend your knees and, and heels forward, right? And you're, so there'll be space here and your three-quarters are going to be, I know I'm touching you, three-quarters, three-quarters. There you go. And heels together, right? Now this is the same thing. Hips up and down, hips up and down, but heels are forward. They're not sickle. Your foot's not sickle. Your foot is, is this way. So just your three quarters on the wall. I'm going to touch you too. Sorry. There. And we do, we do a pelvic lift up. That's it. And come down. And go again. Up. Point your three quarter, three quarter, three quarter. And come down. And one more time. Three quarter, three quarter, three quarter. And come down. Great. Relax. Shake out. Do whatever you need to do. We do that same exercise, but on point, not on three quarter. All right? Scoot, scoot, scoot. Can you feel how this is strengthening your legs, your ankles? Without being weight bearing, right? There's no, are you feeling any place where anything's hurting? Good. So this is a, yes? Oh. This is a way to have, to, to develop and work on strength without injuring your body. All right, we'll do one more time. Toes are pointed. Heels are forward. Heels are forward. Try to get your heels more forward. There you go. That's it. And we go hips forward. Up, 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 up. Good. On point. And come down. Beautiful, Karina. Look at that. Your ankles are so strong. And go again. Up, 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 up. Point your toes. Knees open. And come down. And two more. Toes together. Adjust if you need to. Mm -hmm. And go up, 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 up. Put your heels forward, heels forward, heels forward. And come down. Good job. Last one. And relax your legs. Beautiful. Everything's lovely at the ballet. And go up, 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 up. And come down. And rest. Good job. Whoo! Thank you. Uh, let me come out of the space before you guys move so that I can be away from you. Thank you. And thank you. Stand up, sweetheart. Thank you. Can I get a bow from Karina? Thank you very much. You will go off and get your bar. You will go off and get your bar. And we're going to move on to our next phase. Now we're going to go to the bar. You have marks on the floor. Put your bar down first, Karina, please. Oh, yeah, and socks them off. You can take your socks off once you get your bar set up. And we'll just do some, some um, one more exercise that I that I really like to use to work on susu and holding a tight fifth and doing a beautiful coupe position, which is what we're in most of the time, all the time, yeah? More often than not, I'll say, not all the time, but more often than not, we're in a, in a nice susu fifth. So I want to take some time to work. Now, just as a distinction, Phoebe is on point and in point class, and Karina is just really beginning and developing strength in her legs and feet to do this. So I actually would love it if you don't feel comfortable. Can you do this? Can you do this exercise in uh, flat shoes for me, please? Yes. So we'll wait for you to do that. Take your shoes off. Take quickly into your uh, ballet slippers. Um, one of the things that this exercise is working on is developing uh, shape of the foot um, and strong um, you know, there's there's a point we always are rolling through. Oh, sorry, I didn't use that so you can see my feet. You know, we're rolling through the feet. I've talked about this earlier. This dexterity in the feet and legs that you want to have, like in your hands. And so, this rolling through is really important. Now, now there are times when we have to hop on point, right? And we're not going to be all the way over in this beautiful in step that that B has using that. We're actually going to be right straight up and down on our points. So I'm going to show you, because I'm so proud of my unbruised feet, that I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, what they're actually going to be doing. Come on, you can come on the space off. So they're going to be coming up to three quarter. Whoa! Sorry, I'm three four. Yeah, you're going to be coming up to three quarter, and in point, you're on the very, very tips of your toes, and this plie. This still has to be straight. It can't be all the way over here because there's no support there. So we're working on that. And any of you who have seen uh, Pichero Morocco with the hops on point in the third movement, which is the part I love to death, loved to do, 
you will need that kind of strength for, and my, and my this camera, <laughs> you'll need that kind of strength when you're dancing. So we're going to start out with an exercise that'll work on strengthening that part of the foot. And I'm sorry I'm not paying attention to the chat because I'm trying to talk, but I'll look in there later. All right, so we'll start in first position. We do tendu with the, to the right, with the right leg. And we come into three quarter on a very, very high thing point right into the center of the standing foot. There we go. Pressing down as though you're going to stand on it. We do fondue or plie on that back leg. And make sure that we do not stick your butt out. Go we'll straight down. And now, I'm sorry, you're going to be on a full point. And Karina's going to show it on the end point. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear about that. And now you're going to press up onto Susu. And the back foot is going to scoop in and come into it. That was beautiful. Heel forward on the front foot. Hold and think about your, yes, be on your toe. Don't be over, don't be over like this. Be right up on top of your foot. All right, so I have to touch you, sorry. There. Turn your legs out from the top of your thighs. Turn out, turn out, turn out. Relax your shoulders, face under the armpits. Lovely face and smile. And then let's lower our front foot. So we're here. Now we bend, lower the back and bend the front knee. Good, but keep that knee straight. Tongue to second, and pose in first. Now, when we go to our tongue to in second, oh, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit, sorry you guys. When we're, we're here, sorry, and we do our tongue to in second, these toes are, this is staying very high, the dinner point stays very high, and goes out, and the heel goes into the instep to point. So careful that we don't turn in this way, and then we're not trying to go over on our toe. We're, we're right up and straight up and down on our toes. We go one more time. So let's go to the other side. So we do tendu to the left. And three-quarter, bring it into the, into the front of the standing leg. On Yes, and you're on full point. You're right. Now as you go up, you will straighten your foot out. And straighten it up into susu. Turn out the back leg. Hold your fifth. Hold, 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 hold. Can you take a balance there for me, please, ladies? And take the bar again, and lower the back, um, bend your front knee and lower the back heel, and stretch your foot out to Tondu second. So when you come down from there, Karina, keep that back leg straight when you lower, and close in first. Let's go on the other side. Tondu second, full point, in steps, up, heel, up, point your toe. Tondu, and bring your foot in. Good, and plie, and stretch your knee, rise up. Good, good, that's good. How do you see how our foot came over into the fist so that the both toes are in alignment, not like this or not like this? That would be really wrong to there. And lower, bend your front knee and lower your back heel straight, straight back knee. And Tom is the second. And close in fifth. First, I'm sorry. One more time, the other side. And Tom is second. And three quarter, beautiful. Bring it in, 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 and pull some resistance as you're pulling your leg in. And fondue. And stretch your knee. And rise up to giving points, full points for Phoebe. Find your balance. Turn your legs out from the tops of your thighs, making sure that you feel like you're going down through the floor. Bend your front. Take the balance. I love it. Take the bar. And look, bend your front knee. Front knee is it? Front knee. Back knee is straight, and tendu second, and close in first. Last time, tendu second, three quarter or full point come in. Fondue. Now let's come here. Let's go straight up to susu, not straight and then susu, but straight up to susu. Yes, yes, very nice, very nice, ladies. And bend your front knee, lower your heel down, and tendu to second. And closing first. All right. Thank you very much. Let's do one more exercise where we do tendu second, come into three quarter, fondue, susu right away. Go to four, go to fifth, um, lower your heel, tendu in second. So I'm just adding from here. We can move to fourth position and find your position where you're right in the middle, not where you're in back, but where you're in the center, not back here on the back leg, right? In the center, heels forward, and then come back together. 
and can fall due on the uh, back, the front knee bends, and the back leg goes straight. Keep it straight. Leg is straight. Tongue second. And close in first. All right, let's do the other leg. Time to second. Come into fondue. That's all right, fondue. And susu. Good. Move it to first, to fourth, excuse me. Find your balance. Get right in the center. Bottoms down. Come back into fifth. Let's go plie on in fifth position. Plie on demi points. And stretch up. And one more time. Let's plie, but do not go over your toes. Plie like a, there you go. That's it, and stretch, and plie, and stretch, get tighter, 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 very nice. And then fondue, I'll lower the back heel, and the front foot goes to the point, time to second, and close in first. Excellent, very good. All right, so now we've done, those are some really great exercises, right, to strengthen the ankles and feet. While you're, we had some non-weight bearing, we had some where you can just sit down on a chair, and we had some at the bar to work on your susu. Now I'm going to say thank you to Karina. I mean, if you would take your bar off for me, and we're going to do some traditional, I'll say, um, exercises with Phoebe. If you can move your bar over a little bit more towards the wall for me, and I'm going to go here. Great. Now, one of the things, sometimes I'll use the term tondu escape like the exercise that we were doing before, because the tandu is escaping from fit. And that is the same idea about eshepe. Eshepe means to escape. And so ideally, Phoebe's going to be in her fifth position. She's going to plie, and she's going to escape from fifth, both legs equally at the same point, and end up on, on point in second position. So the first thing, but we'll, 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 let's warm up the feet a little bit more before we do that. Do tandu and come into first position. And first, and let's go plie, relevé, plie, relevé, plie, relevé, and stay. Plie, relevé, plie, relevé, plie, relevé, and stay. Okay? All right, here we go. Five, six, seven, and plie, relevé, bottom down, relevé, plie, relevé, and stay. Plie, relevé, bottom down, and relevé, bottom down, relevé, stay. Plie, relevé, plie, relevé. I'm going slower this time. Stay, stay, stay. Plie, relevé, plie, relevé. Turn out on the plie, relevé. And balance, balance, balance as long as you can or want to come on down. All right, so now let's do. Now let's do the, uh, the SFA escape. We do SFA, plie, SFA, plie, SFA, plie, susu. The susu we just worked on with the tight fifth. Turn out legs, heels forward on a very nice giving point. Yeah? Here we go. Five, six, seven, and plie. And up, and in, and, and, and out, and in, su, su. Plie, out, in, good, escape, to escape, and to su, su. Plie, again, and open, and open, su, su, don't jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, su, su, and hold, 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 hold. And plie again. And rest. So the thing that I, when I said don't jump, what I want you to do when you're doing your relevés and when you're doing your a point work, I want you to, to end up on point, not come off the floor and land on point. Could you show me coming off the floor and landing on point? Wrong. The wrong way. Go. Yep. And close. And again. Go. Huh. Right? So you hear it. She goes up. And then that's that clunky, clunky. Clinking, not clinking, clunky sound that I hear of her shoes on the floor, right? Now, they say the professional dancers can put on a brand new pair of shoes, and because they're so pulled up inside their shoe, they could be brand new shoes, and you would not hear them when they dance on the floor because of the way they work. So that is the goal. We're trying to dance um, where we don't have all this sound happening. Now, can you show me where it's really an escape? where you're actually in fifth. I'm going to move back and go down on my hands and show you from fifth where you shh and end up on many points and close. And you're shh, right? You're sliding on the floor and ending up on point. All right, Phoebe, I'm going to adjust this so you can see how beautiful she looks when she's doing it. Five, six, seven, and as you pay, good. And as you pay, good. As you pay, please, as you pay, and two, and shh. And shoo, 
to so type it, type it. There you go. And rest. Beautiful. Very nice. Where are we on? Same Okay, so the last thing that I would like to do is I would like to show some bourrees, which is something that everybody probably thinks about when you think about a ballerina, how they glide effortlessly across the floor and back, right? So let's try it just while you're at the bar. And we'll work on the, the actual technique of it is knees are bending, feet are actually pointing. I mean, feet are, are moving up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down but you're gliding across the floor. And generally they're done in fifth position. They can also be done in parallel. When they're done in fifth position, what happens is your, what had happened was, no, wait, let me go this way, hold on. <laughs> you're in fifth and this leg crosses over push, crosses over push, it's very subtle, over push, over push, over push this way, right? So that that's how you make yourself travel. All right, so let's just try that, please. Just from there to the end of the bar. And uh, let's go plie susu. Because if you do the, the B plus, you're gonna already go. And plie susu. And bore. <laughs> and plie. Very nice. Wow, I like that. Can you do it again going the other way? Okay, and start a little bit more. There we go, plie susu, and go. Beautiful, and finish, very nice. All right, I like to move the bar out of the way, and let's see if we can do that. Well, I'll let you move it, please. You just take it that way off the screen. You're off screen right now, you're good right here. So I'm going to ask her with my one shoe on, my one shoe off. You stay where you are, please. We're gonna plie. Susu, I mean releve, she's gonna be a parallel. I'm just gonna go backwards with lovely arms, bending knees, bending knees and toes and knees and toes on the, on full point. Yep, still over there, sweetheart. All right, and now now remember, we can see you from the side. So hold your navel through your spine, shoulders down, beautiful, and you can use lovely arms, however you like it. Hey, uh, yeah, here we go. And quiet. I mean, I'll run away and go. Nice, nice. Oh, she's a ball camera. Okay, very good. Can you come back the other way? I'm going to hold the uh, camera so, and go, and up, and go. Excellent. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right, so now can we do it? And get the thing, the crossover piece that I was talking about. So you would have your right foot front, and let's do just start in coupe, fondue, ba, 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 and go sideways. I mean, go uh, in fifth position. Same, you can come on the diagonal if you like, that's fine. Five, six, seven, and nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, oh, she's off the camera. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I don't know if they're gonna let me do this again. All right, no, no, I'm done. Oh man, can you come to the center? Can you come, to Karina? Maybe one here, one there, one there, and let's just do a little bit of a rev and say so long. We can, and Marie, would you join us? <laughs> just be right here, down, down front. Down, down, no, not close to them. Down front. There we go. And so I'm going to come over a little bit so I can see Phoebe, and then. Back up a little bit, please. Move back some, and there you go, right there. So now you guys will just follow me. I'm gonna be off screen, <laughs> and we'll be in B plus, and we'll step to the right, and to um, go to B plus. Ooh, Lord, I got right in front of her. And fun, um, curtsy, and come up, and let's step to the left, go the other way. And come to the B plus and curtsy bow and come up. And this is what happens at the end of every class. And you would thank the teacher for sharing their, their knowledge with you. And I would thank the students for being with me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's great. All right, you guys just hang out off camera in case something, a question comes up that I need to um, answer or talk about. I actually need what somebody to kind of be looking at the chat and see what kind of questions I need to be answering. But first, I will talk about, come on the other side of us, please. 
I'm going to use, so thank you so much for joining our class today. And really it's just kind of tips on and advice on, on uh, point work. I want to just start out by saying thank you so much to Virginia Johnson, um, my sister friend, and who is also, you know, as we all know, the artistic director of the Dance Theater of Harlem for this opportunity to share my knowledge with you and, and to talk to the DTH audience. As I said earlier, it's my pleasure to have the very first uh, class in this space be all about the Theater of Harlem. And I'm really honored to have dancers working with me from my hometown, Augusta, Georgia, um, in my space. I trained here with Ron Colton, who was a dancer with the New York City Ballet at, during the time that Arthur Mitchell was there. And he, um, I joined Dance Theater Hall in 1973. I know people are going like, 73, how old is she? She looks good. <laughs> so um, I tell you, dancing will keep you young, doing something that you absolutely love feeds my heart and my soul. And I've been blessed to be in this field for decades, literally decades. I, my um, 22 year career with the Dance Theater of Harlem, as I said, started with an introduction to Carl Shook, one of the co-directors of the company from um, by my teacher, Ron Colton here in Augusta, Georgia. And I joined the company with Mel Tomlinson and a woman named Karen Wright who was in Atlanta. I um, traveled the world. I, I always told my father when he would ask me what did I want to do with my life, I would say that I wanted to be a world traveler. And he was like, well, how are you going to do that? I was like, I don't know. I haven't figured that part out yet. But I was still dancing and I was in love with ballet and I love point work. And so um, I went, moved to New York at 17 and joined the Dance Theater of Harlem. My career um, from there, when I retired from DTH, I moved back, well, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And I became the director of education for the Atlanta Ballet under the direction of John McFall. Shortly after that, I moved. I'm a nomad. I like to move around a lot. I've had lots of different jobs and I've lived in many different cities all, all around dance. I became the artistic director of the Oakland Ballet out in Oakland, California. And I was one of the first women, black women, to run a ballet company in this country, something I'm very proud of and had a wonderful opportunity to. Um, higher dancers, and I was um, my company was 25% people of color, and I also love jazz. My father um, instilled me with the love of jazz, and so a lot of my programming and curation had to do with bringing on jazz musicians and combining them with choreographers who wanted to work with jazz to create ballets to jazz music. And I would have the musicians come, and they would be on the first part of the program. And then there would be ballet. So there was cross-pollination of these audiences. And then one, there was always a piece, the finale, that had brought the musicians and the dancers together. And so um, that, that was just a dream come true for me. I've also uh, taught in university. I love teaching. I've discovered a accelerated learning technique called com I, using computerized motion analysis. Dancers have a great sense of um, self-awareness. -aware, and somewhat when they look at themselves dancing and can see how it how their body is, is um, performing, they remember what it felt like. And so it's easy to change the feeling. When you change the feeling and you add the technique, the best, you know, the expert way to the body pathways to move the body. And then you learn that, oh, the way that I felt when I was doing that arabesque, when I thought my leg was at 180 degrees and I know my arms were straight and I was smiling, and then I look at the picture and none of that is happening, I remember that that feeling is null and void and I need to get a new feeling. So I help people in that kind of way. And also the uh, reinforced motor function for ballet application, which has been created by a man named Sean McLeod, who I've been working with for the last three years. I mean, it's an incredible technique accelerated learning technique about strength, alignment, flexibility, and stamina, and also this kind of emotional confidence. Um, I look at some of the dancers that I've been training um, using these principles, and I talked with one of um, Karina's um, teacher today, and she told me that, that she could tell something was different with Karina. Her confidence, her, um, she's always had a great work ethic, but her technique has improved so much and so I know how important that is to be supplementing your um, regular training 
with um, working with a, with a private coach. Are there any questions that anyone might have for me? I have someone, my, my youngest brother, Russell, looking at the chat to um, shoot questions to me. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I think we have a few minutes left. How many minutes do we have left? Uh, 10. We have about 10 minutes left. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. We have until 7.30 for our, our I didn't realize that talk so fast. Gosh, <laughs> look at all that in five minutes. Woo! <laughs> Wow. Well, mm -hmm. It's over at 7.30. It's 7.30? It's over at 7.30, mm -hmm. yeah. We're over at 7.30, so I have 10 minutes. So if yeah. there are any questions, we'll look at the chat and see if there are any there. Um, and I'm going to check and see if any ETH people are, are, are up in the chat. Thank you. The answer to the problem said something that y'all up with. They say? Oh, here's someone. Okay. Melissa Johnson wants to know, she says, I'm 31. Is it too late for point? It is not too late for point. I don't know if you missed Anne Marie. I'm not, Emery's 32, <laughs> so <laughs> you, it's absolutely not. And the thing is, it, it's all about desire, how hard you, how diligently you're going to work and how you can strengthen, some of the exercises that I gave, you know, will help you strengthen your ankles and feet. And certainly you can dance on point, absolutely. We have some more questions, they're flooding in. Oh, now. the questions are flooding so, in. Woo! Demetrius uh, Shields says, where are you teaching next? I am. I just built this brand new studio in my home, and with COVID nineteen and social distancing, I am teaching online. So um, put your email in the chat, and I'll, I'll contact you, and we can set something up. Great. And then Smith Corporation wants to know: Are there any? No. Are there as many opportunities to train in Georgia like New York? No. There's no. There's no place like New York where for training. There's almost a dance school on every corner. There's steps. There's Perry dance. There's Broadway dance center. There's Giphy. There's ABT. New York City Ballet. DTA. Alan Ailey. Come on. No. <laughs> but here in Augusta, there are some great schools. We have we've got great training here. There's a great performing arts high school called Davidson Fine Arts. There's Colton Ballet, that's my home school. There's um, Ron Jones, Columbia Ballet. There are great, there are great opportunities. And that's just Augusta. There are beautiful schools in Atlanta. If you um, give me your email address, I'm happy to connect you with some of the ones that I think are giving, providing outstanding training. Okay, so we heard from Courtney Key. She says, I really like the exercises on the wall. Are there more progressions on the wall? Yes, there are. There's a progression as you become stronger with double pay. That into a split um, in front, side, not back, of course, because we're on the wall. But yes, there are others. I certainly. Okay, and then Clammy Whammy, she says, Hi, this is Tamala McClam. Hello. What's your website? Uh, TheKarenBrown.com. Okay. Easy to remember. TheKarenBrown.com. Excellent. Excellent. We'll keep those questions coming because we have a few more minutes. We have about eight minutes left. So I, while we're waiting for the questions to come in, I'm going to tell you a story about, for those of you who joined in the beginning, there was a jacket that um, uh, was on camera, which is the Dance Theater of Harlem um, jacket. It's uh, from our tour of the Soviet Union in 1988. And the company, it was um, one of the most, God, every ex, ex um, Every kind of magical, wonderful way you could think about touring happened and every kind of horrible way of touring happened. But one thing, we work together as a company, all work together. Every day in, day out, we travel, we're in the same hotel, we go to work at the theater, our breaks are, are generally spent with each other or going over our, our um, work. And But what we look forward to at the end of the day is breaking up into small groups and going away from the rest of the group to have dinner or to go out and see a movie or, or something on our own. But when we were in the Soviet Union, we were always together all of the time. All of our meals, we were, our meals were brought in. We ate together. We had three buses to go onto the grounds of the Kremlin and to come away from the Kremlin back to our hotel. And there just was no way to get away from each other. But it was also, magnificent. so that was a little challenging for us, but it was also a wonderful opportunity to, to again, be cultural ambassadors um, as dancers from the United States. And um, one of the things that I remember is the stage that we performed on was one of the biggest stages that we have ever performed, I have ever performed on. It felt like it was the size of a football field. 
So imagine this. In Cantero, Morocco, the women are, the core women are standing on the quarter mark of the stage. And generally, we would have four counts from the wing to get to the quarter mark of the stage. We had 16 counts before our four counts. At least that's what it felt like to run to the quarter mark of the stage. So we were running to get a beef west, just to get to the stage, get to our mark. And so when we would, then let me just finish quickly, we, we throw our energy out. You know, what happens is it reverberates and the audience throws back their receiving. And, and the audience from, the energy from Cochero Morocco didn't come back until the third ballet. And so we, we did our bow. We we're like, oh my God, they don't like it. This is, we used to get a lot of applause for this. And then Doina or some quiet ballet with two people is the third piece. And they got all the roar of applause from uh, Cochero Morocco. So it was an interesting kind of way to be there. Great. We had a question from Demetrius Shields, another. Um, as a beginner, how often weekly do you recommend taking point? You know, generally as a beginner, what you'll start to do is have 15 minutes maybe at the end of your technique class, and then you graduate, and then maybe that happens once a week, um, depending on how long how often you're taking. I mean, as a beginner, sometimes you're just taking one class a week. So once you get strong enough, then maybe you go up to 15 minutes at the end of a class, and then as you progress, and get stronger, then you'll be taking a point class, or it'll be longer. You'll up, ultimately you will get to the point where you take class on point, right? Which is a wonderful thing to do. Okay, Petty Rubble says, "How much are your private lessons?" Private lessons vary because from um, depending on what package you buy. I usually sell my classes in 10, 15, and twenty session packages, and so we can certainly talk. I'm interested in talking with you about that. And what is the website where we can reach you? At thekarenbrown.com. Great. Is the website. You can also email me at onpointplus at gmail.com. And that's E N P O I N T E P L U S at gmail.com. Okay. So uh, Katie Rose wants to know what are some shows or dance pieces that you would recommend we watch? I would recommend that you watch, I mean, um, well, if I think about the Dance Theater of Harlem, um, certainly the, the, the pieces that are being shown on the Dance Theater of Harlem website, there's so many things that are out there. Now, I love the Balanchine works, the Serenades, Concerto Barocco. I love Four Temperaments. Um, I love Allegro Briant. That was one of my favorite pieces that I used to do with my partner, Keith Saunders. We thought we were Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. We had a blast. And we also had a chance to perform that piece at the White House. Um, out the ALE work is also beautiful. And there are lots of, um, out, all of the companies are presenting their works online. ABT, New York City Ballet. I love us this sweet, sweet little company in Philadelphia called Ballet X. I used to teach at the University of the Arts and um, worked with their their artistic director and many of the dancers there in the company. I know them well. I love their work too. So there's there's just a plethora of um, art out there on, on the scene now. Okay. Um, this might be one of our last questions. We have three minutes left. Okay. But Denise Reeves says, do you have any different exercises for guys on point since they're, as their ankles are stiffer? Yes, I would, I would recommend certainly the, the um, exercise on the wall. You know, that's kind of a unisex um, exercise for strengthening ankles and feet. The flex point, flex point, flex point. Um, and then I know I've, I've used a TheraBand to um, strengthen my feet. So you can have a, the TheraBand. It's so like a, a, a wide, thin rubber band, right? And you put it around your toes. I'm sorry. Oh, I can use my sock as to kind of demonstrate. So let's say there's a band. This is stretchy. goes around your feet like this or your foot like this one at a time. And then you would point, oh, sorry, I'm getting out of the camera. Wait a minute, no, let me do this anymore. Point and flex. But you know, you're totally inside point and flex like this with a TheraBand for strengthening the ankles and toes. You can use that. Um, also, I think I, I use to have a five pound ankle weights for the relevés. And I would do those on um, with a tennis ball between my knees and my ankles with a five pound weight. Releve rising up and coming down, up and coming down. Not any jumping and no big movements off the floor, just to have that weight um, for your ankles and feet. 
Okay, this is a perfect last question. Demetrius wants to know, what's your favorite Arthur Mitchell moment? <laughs> Boy, there are a thousand of them. Oh my gosh. I, I guess I would say my favorite Arthur Mitchell moment, I, God, that's a hard question, would be when you worked with him in uh, quote unquote request rehearsals. That means everybody goes home and Karen, you stay because I want to work on your solo. That's my that was my request rehearsal. So when you work 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 on a piece to to make it perfect, I mean Arthur Mitchell had a unique way of making uh, a star, the bringing out the best in each one of the artists that he that he um, hired and nurtured and guided. And when the best moment is when he comes backstage and you've done a performance really well and he actually tells you how good it was because most of the time you're just hearing how it can be improved. And so that was my, that was one of my favorite moments is when that happened to me one day after I did uh, Fall River Legend. Okay, last question. What products do you recommend? So I, um, like when Phoebe was putting that, um, I can't remember, what was the name of the product? Um, it's something that she puts on her feet to keep them dry and so that they don't um, scratch up. Uh, this is, um, sorry, foot glide. It was already, she got it at, okay. Um, it can be, okay, okay, <laughs> sorry. But what I, I don't use that because I'm certainly I'm not dancing on point anymore. But what I um, I like to use a product called Real Time Pain Relief. They have a foot cream that I absolutely, I mean, I carry it with me in my dance bag and it's great for um, um, soothing my feet once I finish dancing. And they have lots of other products too for um, muscle. It's a topical pain relief lotion. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Goodbye. Please stay stay tuned to DTH. I'm going to show you how to contact me. I've got a giant banner. And can you hold that? I don't know my arm's long enough. Please support Dance Theater of Harlem. You know that during COVID-19, our New York season was canceled. The tourism is canceled. And so we need your support. Thank you so much. Thanks, Virginia. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Okay. What does it say? Are you sure you want to end, exit the stream? Yes. <laughs>